Good morning, I'm Chris Meyer. And I'm Trisha Parody from the Springfield Family Center. And we're here with Mark Foresby at the Killarney, 44 Pond Street in Ludlow at the foot of Okemo. How are you doing this morning, Mark? I'm doing very well. How are you? Good, thank you. Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Mark Foresby. Uh, I own the Killarney Irish Pub from Chester, Vermont. Uh, now, originally from uh, families from the Connecticut area. Um, kind of grew up and have traveled quite a bit in my younger years, but uh, are settled here now. Have three beautiful kids, a great wife, and uh, yeah, love it here in Vermont. It's terrific. How did you get started in the restaurant business, Mark? Uh, I had my first restaurant experience at the age of 16. Waiting tables uh, at a, a retirement community was the first job I ever had and stuck with it. Uh, got out of the actual restaurant side of things, but was on the periphery. I worked for uh, a couple of uh, liquor companies, beer companies in my uh, younger years and um, was in Boston uh, pitching a guy on a draft line and realized I was on the wrong side of the table. So two years later, I opened Killarney, so. Wonderful. And how long has Killarney been here, Mark? 16 years. Um, how has COVID impacted your business? Uh, our numbers are definitely down um, with the restrictions placed on the bar and the capacity. Um, it's just a different feel. Um, we're doing a lot of takeout, so our, our food numbers are definitely consistent and in a good place. Uh, but we miss the bar. It's the heart of the restaurant. It's where people come to gather and hang out. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, keep it from being what it was, you know, a year and a half ago. Sure. Would you say that your participation in the Everyone Eats program has had a positive impact on your business? Yes, it has, both financially and um, it, it's funny, when we're here Wednesday mornings bright and we're early putting everything together, uh, there's a real sense of, uh, I don't know if community is the right word, but you know, we all feel like we're doing something for a reason and, and it's a good vibe, it's a good feel. Sure, absolutely. What did you think of the Everyone Eats program when you were asked to participate? Uh, at first, I was hesitant, um, a little bit skeptical, but uh, it did not take long in my conversation with Chris. I think in the first conversation, I don't even think we had two, by the end of it, I understood what you were trying to do and I understood where it was going and uh, we were in 100%. I think it's amazing how you transition from doing like 100 meals and that feels like so much and then you do 200 meals and that feels like so much and then you do 300 meals and it's like, boy, 100 and 200 is sure easy. Yeah. You've really rolled with the punches in our needs for this and we definitely appreciate that. What has been your favorite meal that you've produced for the program? I think my favorite meals in general are the ones that we also serve here at the restaurant. So we've done, for instance, our shepherd's pie, um, our bangers and mash, I thought was a, a really uh, fun one to do and it was a little different. Uh, so I like doing things that we actually serve here. Everyone Eats requires the use of Vermont ingredients, Mark. Have you changed purchasing for your restaurant as a result of this? Uh, yes, we have. We've found some new products, we've found some new distributors, um, some fun things that we didn't know we could get from the state of Vermont in, in bulk numbers, like potatoes, for instance, our chef potatoes. And uh, just the perception was always that Vermont products were expensive because they were being produced locally. And it's not always the case, so we found some fun things to use. Have you discovered any Vermont products that have surprised you? Uh, I think what has surprised me is the products I can get. For instance, Vermont Farms, uh, I didn't realize that they did um, sweet Italian sausage and things like that. So uh, the fact that, you know, we always thought of them as a chicken producer or something like that, and uh, they have a much broader um, uh, variety of things that they offer, and we found that out, and we have used them. Any of the Vermont ingredients that you've used that you think you'll continue using in your everyday menu? Yes, absolutely. Uh, again, Vermont Fresh comes to mind. Um, Green Mountain Smokehouse is another company that we use regularly, and um, you know they're part of our regular mix now. And we will look closer at the local produce availability when it comes into play. I was on the uh, Evening Song Farm website. I got an email from them today, and uh, not this week's meal, but the next week's meal, we'll be using their red potatoes and fingerlings. So they're, they're back in stock. So moving on, what is your perception of food insecurity in Vermont, Mark? Um, I really didn't have a perception of it before COVID and then uh, the introduction of this program to me. Um, didn't give it a lot of thought. I knew it was out there and uh, just assumed that it was being handled with Meals on Wheels and other programs. I had worked with the Springfield Family Center, I've cooked for you guys in the past. And um, 
I am much more aware of it now and uh, aware of the scope of the problem. What have you done through your restaurant to address food insecurity? Prior to Everyone Eats, not a lot. If somebody came by looking for a donation, we'd do what we could, uh, but it was always small things and, and more event specific than community specific. And um, since Everyone Eats, obviously, you know, we know what the program does and now we participate in a large way, <laughs> we like to think. How would you describe your relationship to the community pre-COVID and, and now? We have always been a big supporter of anything in the community, but again, it was very event specific. Um, somebody would come and say, we're having a fundraiser, can we get a gift certificate? We would always oblige, uh, you know, can you cook a meal for this, you know, cocktail hour or whatever we're having as a fundraiser and we would do something. Um, but that's really how it, you know, what it revolved around. Somebody coming to us asking for help and we would say yes. Do you feel that restaurants have a, a role in emergency response? I do, and it's funny, we got interviewed um, on Vermont Public Radio on the day of the shutdown, which was St. Patty's Day, so it was a good space to be. And I made a comment at that point that I felt restaurants were in a unique position to offer help in situations like this, not just COVID, but uh, we helped out with Irene quite a bit. We cooked for the National Guard for almost a month and a half. and. Um, you know, we have the ability, we have the space, we have the people, um, we should be utilized. And I think uh, having a list of restaurants that are willing and able to help in these situations would be nice to have on the back burner. Just something to say, hey, this is a tough situation. We know we've got these six people we can go to, or these six establishments we can go to. You've been one of the, the first people involved with Everyone Eats with the Chester Springfield Hub. And I wonder if you see a role for your restaurant moving forward in just addressing food insecurity. Um, I do. Uh, if everyone eats were to evolve into something else, we would certainly uh, look at it and see what it is and what it entails, and we would want to be involved. Uh, so, Are you glad that you participated in the Everyone Eats program? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, going back to that Wednesday morning feel, you know, when we're all here and drinking our coffee and putting the meals together and the music's playing and it's, we just feel like we're doing something good. It's a, everybody leaves with a great feeling. Well, it's definitely been a joy having you be part of the program. We've certainly appreciated all your work and you've really stepped up a lot of times when we've needed you. Any parting thoughts that you have that you'd like to, to share? No, just that I'd like to see the program continue. I think beyond the um, scope of you know, what's going on with COVID. I think there's a place for this and there's a place for restaurants to be a part of it. Well, we definitely agree. Thank you, Mark. We're here with Mark Voresby at the Killarney, 44 Pond Street in Ludlow at the foot of Okemo. Thanks again, Mark. Thank you.